We're going to kick off our discussion of frequency-based effects by talking about filtering and using filters to process your sounds. You're already very familiar with filters if you went through any of the videos last week where we talked about subtractive synthesis, or if you went through the first course where we spent a lot of time talking about just the nuts and bolts of how these things work. In this course, we can go into a little more depth and talk about some more applications to using filters, because my guess is you already have a good idea of what filters are. You'll notice that I've actually added the TDR Nova for a second time. It's still sitting in the Dynamics Compressor Limiter, and then I just copy and pasted it again into the EQ section. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but for me and for uh, like knowing why I'm pulling to an effect, I like having it in both of those locations. So if I'm you know, looking for the TDR Nova and I wanna use it as an EQ, if it's only sitting in the dynamic section, that's gonna confuse me a little bit. So the beauty of this effect is that we can use it as a compressor, as an EQ, or as a dynamic EQ if we choose to. That's more of an advanced application. And I showed you one of the example of that uh, just a few videos ago. But let's actually open these up and talk about what these filters are, what they're doing, how they work, et cetera. So we have an instance of the Nova here. I already turned off all of these EQ bands because we don't need to use them if we're gonna be using the filters. As you can tell, the filters exist down here in the bottom left. And we have a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And the other great thing about this uh, plugin is that we have an analyzer and we can analyze the output, which is really nice, which means we'll actually see what's happening to our spectrum as we process the sound. So right now I just have some noise playing through that really is emphasizing the low end so that we can have something that's a little bit more consistent across the entire spectrum. You can see that like so. The other thing you'll notice is that with this analyzer, it actually goes below and above our ranges of human hearing. So it goes all the way down to 10 Hertz and all the way up to 40 K. And that can be useful because for your speakers to play most effectively, you want things to be within the range of human hearing because a speaker doesn't know necessarily that it's supposed to only play back things in a range where you or I could hear it. Right. I mean, it's just getting the direction that, OK, this is the signal coming in. This is what electrical signal I'm being fed. I'm going to try to generate that. So you, a lot of times you'll see that with noise in this example, this is going well below 20 hertz. And so if you had a subwoofer, it's trying to play that and it's not gonna do a very good job with it. So this is all about getting your speakers to work efficiently. And if I saw that a sound came in and I could tell that it was going way down here into the 10 Hertz range and way over 20K, uh, some people will leave the over 20K because there is this perception of added brightness, even if we can't technically hear it, some people will leave it, some people won't. I almost always tend to work within that range of human hearing because I want my speakers to be efficient. And I don't know what sort of playback system someone else is working with. So let's say that you're making dance music and you're going into a club and it has a really great bass system, for example. You do not want to have things that are down here in like the 10 hertz range because it's going to try to play that back. And A, it might like knock somebody over the actual sound wave. And B, it's probably going to sound like a big mess. And that's why for dance music, really getting your low end in order is so important. It's so that when you go and you play in a club that has this really great sound system, it's actually going to sound clear in all of your frequency ranges. And you're not just going to have this big mess down in the bottom that's going to distract people from the rest of the song. And this is another reason why analyzers can be so useful. Because you might be working on a system with small speakers and no subwoofer where you can't even hear anything until you're maybe 50 60 70 hertz in in which case you have no idea that you're getting a big buildup down here so some people say you should never work with analyzers you should just use your ears and i would tend to agree with that but up to a point you have to have a lot of experience working with eq and listening to sound to kind of know where things are and where things aren't and where maybe you need to make adjustments so it's up to you if you want to use the analyzer I'm going to use it because I think that it's useful for us to see um, what's going on and see what happens when we make changes. So we're adding that second sense in there, not just our ears, but our eyes. And for learning, the more senses you can engage, typically the better. And the more you get used to working with EQ and listening to the frequency spectrum, I think the better off you're going to be and the sooner you won't need to use the analyzer as a crutch. But in some cases, it's not being used as a crutch. Like in this case, this isn't a crutch. This is telling me that I have all of this content down here that needs to go away. And I really wouldn't know that otherwise. All right, so let's start by working with the high pass filter. 
okay and so this is called a high pass which literally means the high frequencies are going to continue to pass through as you change the cutoff point and this is indicating to us the cutoff point we can read 20 30 40 whatever and as we're listening back to this you'll hear what happens Right, so pretty straightforward. And a lot of people will encourage you to high pass every single sound that you use. I don't encourage that unless you actually see that there's something there that needs to be high passed. And I'll give you some examples of that right now. Probably all of these will work as examples, but I definitely noticed this when I was looking and listening to this poem. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, this person recorded the poem and then just uploaded it. They probably didn't process their voice at all. It's really S-y, like it kind of needs to be DS'd for this to be um, really nice sounding all the way across. Yet when I looked at this and I had the Nova up, and you'll see this as well. Farewell, but whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth in your bower. I'm going to increase the output gain just so we can see where all the frequencies are existing. Farewell, but whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth in your bower. And admittedly so, this is only going down like minus 12, so we're not necessarily seeing everything per se. It looks like to me that a low, uh, excuse me, a high pass filter has already been engaged on this sound. And unless I have this like cranked way up and it's the loudest thing going on in my track, I don't think that any of these low frequencies are going to cause a problem. But some people would still tell you, okay, you should high pass this and just like put it up to here. And let's take a listen and hear if this makes a difference. But... Whenever you welcome the hour that awakens the night song of birth in your bower, then think of the friend who once welcomed it too. Uh, maybe there's a subtle difference, but to me, it's not a big enough difference to rationalize putting on a high pass filter. Because every time you're adding filters or you're adding effects processors, you are coloring the sound. You're actually causing some like phase discrepancies into the sound we're not going to go into the technical stuff about that but like always when in doubt leave it out and only put something in if there's a reason to and we talked about in the last video you can't add or take away things that aren't there so don't just put a high pass filter on absolutely everything unless you see and hear that it needs to be taken away and right now i actually for these recordings i'm listening on really good headphones like full range headphones and i'm not hearing anything down there that i feel like needs to be taken away if we look at this stream sound this is another good example where it sounds like the person has just kind of uploaded this straight. You can literally see that this has been both high passed and low passed already just by looking. And that's not to say that you can't add additional high pass and low pass filters, but only if you have an intention to do so. So if I'm listening to this and saying, you know what, I still think it's too much going on in the low end or in the low mids, I'll go ahead and drop a filter on there because that's my intention, because it's gonna work better for whatever reason I'm bringing this in to begin with. So I could go in. And so I can focus in on only really the higher parts of the water streaming by and also the bird songs in the background. But if I feel like those bird songs are too sharp, So this would be a choice as to whether or not you want some of that wind and ambience in the background or you don't. Personally, for me, I'd probably keep it in just because I kind of like that effect. I feel like it really fills things out. But if you were using this for like a pop song, for just like a moment for some reason, you absolutely wouldn't want that low end in there because it's going to cause problems for everything else that's going on. It's going to build up in that low end and you're going to end up with kind of a mess down there. And remember, like we said before, the low frequencies, those are the biggest and largest frequencies. And so they tend to have the biggest buildup and have the biggest sort of like phase clash problems of any any frequency range here because they're the longest frequencies and they take the longest to uh, dissipate and eventually you know fade away and get absorbed into the air or against all the materials that are in the room what have you the next thing we can look at here on the frequency is the slope control 
So some people get a little bit confused about the slope. You think, okay, I have my cutoff frequency set here to 300. So everything below 300 is just going to be cut off immediately. That's not how it works. It would sound very unnatural for us to do that. And let's go back to the actual white noise example here. Well, this isn't actually white noise, but just the noise example here. And uh, take a listen to what happens when we change the slope. And then we'll talk about technically what's going on here. So the steeper the slope, the more extreme the cutoff. So you actually are cutting off a lot more frequencies at that cutoff point and below that cutoff point, but also a lot more unnatural the filter is going to sound. There are some plugins and processors that claim to have, you know, like completely transparent filters. I still always feel like the higher you go up, the more unnatural it's going to sound, but sometimes unnatural is what you're going for and it will fix the problem that you have or it will give you the desired effect you're looking for. So we remember that with octaves, the octave ranges are going by like multiple integers, right? So if we're at 110, the next octave up is at 220, then 440, then 880, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this slope is directly related to that concept. So if I go in here and let's use the low pass filter now and let's actually type in here let's go to 110 if i put this slope to 6 db what this is telling me is that at each octave we are decreasing by six decibels so at 110 we're not really going to be having much or any cutoff at all it's going to be down 6 db here at this 110 point all right, from wherever it is before. And then at 220, it's going to be down to uh, minus 12 decibels. And then at 440, it's going to be down 18. So if we look, that's very low end sounding, but you'll notice that it continues on for quite a long way. And that's because this is a very gradual, broad slope. If we take this up to 24, now at that 110 point, we're down 24 decibels. And then if we go up to 220, we're gonna be down 48. But what you'll notice is that when you actually sweep and move this around, the more noticeable the cutoff frequency is, is based on the slope, when it's moving. So if I move it at six decibels, it's gonna sound very natural. Pretty smooth, but compare that to 72. So you can like literally hear the steps that it's taking because it's so sharp. It's just like letting new frequencies in. And that's kind of a cool effect. If you were going to automate this, that might work really well. Then again, it may not work really well. Okay, so that is the basics with the high pass and the low pass filters. Uh, just a big point I want to get across is again, you can't take away or add something that isn't there. So don't be going in and high passing every single sound just because you've been told that that's what you're supposed to do. Everybody's been told that's what you're supposed to do. And so when you're bringing in samples and other loops and things that you're going to find online, even from a place like freesound.org where people don't necessarily have to process their sounds, more likely than not, they've actually put on some kind of high pass filter already. And so only if you want that effect of taking out more frequencies, should you be adding on a high pass filter or a low pass filter. Now that you've spent a lot of time working with and playing around with subtractive synthesizers that have filters, you've probably gotten accustomed to a resonance or a Q control. And with this TDR Nova, we don't have a resonance or a Q control, right? We can't take this cutoff point and actually emphasize the slope there. But with our synthesizers, we can do that. And with a lot of other um, EQ and filter type plugins, you will see a Q control or a resonance control. So if we bring up the helm here, you can see that we're working with a standard low pass filter and its cutoff point is at, let's take it up here to, we'll just bring it to like 70, okay? This is just an arbitrary number. If I want to increase the resonance, I can just take this other control and start to bring that up. So now what it's going to do is it's going to emphasize, it's going to change the slope at the cutoff point and make it sharper so that that frequency comes through a lot sharper. And then when I move this cutoff, it's now going to have much more of a like sonic impact and much more of a slap in the face where you can hear this cue, you can hear this resonance really being emphasized as we move the cutoff. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
We probably have it too high. It got a little crazy there. As compared to no resonance. Right, so it's just a question of character, and we can actually look at this on the span device as well if we'd like. And there you can see it. Like so. And one final thing I want to point out to you is that we also have commonly on synthesizers and with EQs in general, something like a bandpass filter. And a bandpass is just a high pass and a low pass filter working together from a central frequency. So in this case, we can see that central frequency. We can go to the left and to the right. And then if we want to increase the sharpness of that, we'll go ahead and again, increase the resonance. So now you're going to see uh, more limited frequencies, but it's going to have much more of like that sharp impact when we're moving around the cutoff. Last but not least, let's talk about automating the filter cutoff because this is such a common thing that you do. When you're working with a synthesizer, you have an envelope, right? And that envelope is moving the filter around, but you can do the same thing inside of your digital audio workstation with automation and have more of a manual control over it. So instead of just having the ADSR envelope, you could actually make it as, move it around as much and as crazy as you want. So we'll start with the noise and this would be a fairly common thing to do. I'm gonna put this in stretch mode so that I can actually add some pitch movement as well. So here's just the noise we have right now. What I'm gonna do is create like a little sweep out of this. And the first thing I'd probably do is go in here and take the pitch and add some kind of a pitch rise towards the very end. So with these sweep sounds that you hear in popular music and dance music today, normally they're a lot more complex than just starting with a block of noise and adding in the filter cutoff. You can do a lot more with these and I'd encourage that you do, but this is the basic. So I'm just gonna take this and have this rise. I don't know, just put it by 12. Uh, it may not sound very good. Let's go up like as high as it will let us go and then add a slope to this. Okay, that might work. And then I'm going to take my Nova device and I'm going to go with the low pass, not even going to use a high pass. Let's go with 24 decibel slope. I'm going to start it down quite low and then I'll raise this up in time. And to do that, I just have to go into my automation, make sure you consult your own uh, documentation about how automation is working in your digital audio workstation. But for me, I just go down, it gives me my last touched parameter, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add a nice little sweep on here with some movement. And let me just cut off the very end, that doesn't sound very good. Let's try this. And then we could go and bring this into something like the drum loop, for example. So let's try that. So that sounds pretty cool. And then I could do the same thing with the drum beat. I could go in, add on my Nova device here inside of frequency EQ. And I could take it, bring in my low pass. Let's have this one be like the 72. Let's make it be a kind of crazy effect. I'm gonna bring this right on down here. Ooh, that sounds crazy. Let's start it there. And then we'll just fade this up slowly. So here it is.
And if I wanted to get crazy, I could even go further and try to balance the gain out. So I could have it be louder because I know that when it's cut off that much that we're losing all those upper frequencies. So it's going to sound quieter. So if I just automate the output gain, we should be able to take care of that as well. 